So let's say you want to activate the new rifts in your world, but you also kind of don't want to because you made the mistake I did and you built with berry bushes in your base and you don't want bright shades infecting your place. Or maybe you want to build a farm for your bright shades so you can farm them efficiently and quickly rather than, you know, trying to kill them in this mess like that I've made here. Or maybe you like farming and for some reason the bright shades really, really like to infect your crops. And it's annoying you. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can manipulate the spawn of the bright shades to force them where you want them to spawn and how you can effectively ignore them in your base. Uh, thanks to Electro Eli's post on the Clay forums as it helped me in make this video. So in order to manipulate the spawning of the bright shades, you first need to know how they spawn and what they choose to infect. Uh, they will infect berry bushes, all three versions of them, grass, tufts, saplings, moon saplings, and regular saplings, uh, plants, farm plants that you've planted, like dragon fruit, and weeds. These are the targets that they choose. What they will prioritize is stuff that you transplanted yourself. These are all things I transplanted myself, they will target these first before they target naturally spawning entities. So how does the game know what it needs to infect? Well, when you transplant something, like I plant transplanted these berry bushes here, what something called a domestic plant herd is created. It's like a herd for lightning goats or volk goats and beefalo herds. It works in a similar manner. When you plant or transplant your plant, a domestic plant herd is created and it adds plants to that herd in a 10 tile range. So this berry bush over here is number one. This one's 10 tiles away. These are all considered to be part of the same domestic plant herd that the bright shades can target to infect. These are two. I'll get into that later as part of the range, but let's just pretend it's not here. If you plant something outside of that range, you create a new domestic plant herd. So here we have just a single berry bush. It's just a domestic plant herd of one. I can show you with this command right here. Here you go, members one. And what you also see here is that you have a max size of 36 members that be that can be added to the domestic plant herd. And so here, I can find it. I have these crops. There's 36 of them. Uh, we have the max size of the domestic plant herd of size 36. So when the rift spawns and they're at, it's at its max stage and you'll see it on the, on the map as an icon, what the game does, it chooses the top five most populous domestic plant herds you have. So we have one here, size 17. This one over here, size one. And this one over here of size 36. These are the top five most populous domestic plant herds because we planted them. It will choose one of these three, because I don't have five yet. And then randomly of the, the, the targets that is chosen will send a bright, shade, a bright shade to it. So this one has a one third chance. This one has a one third chance. This one has a one third chance, despite them of being the same size. And this is where the spawning manipulation part comes in. So here I have the size 36 domest uh, domestic plant herd, and I've just recreated this 11 tiles away. Oil plants don't matter. And I've done it again over here. And I've done this 10 times with an 11 tile gap away from each other. So the, the rifts are in the world, they have decided, all right, it's time to send uh, the bright shades your way. Uh, there's a total of six waves that can occur. It's a uh, range between four and six. And each wave you'll get three bright shades to spawn. So when it's deciding when to spawn, it's going to look for the top five most populous domestic planters in your world. Since we have ten... And these are all filled to the brim with the uh, the max herd size. The game has no choice but to spawn the bright shades in these farms. 
This one's a little special. I'll get into this one a little later. So why did I choose 10? Let's say five waves have occurred. One, two, three, four, five. These five are infected. Wave number six is deciding where should I spawn? Well, let's look at the top five domestic plant herds in the world that still remain. One, two, three, four, five. The game has no choice but to spawn the bright shades in the remaining five domestic plant herds that we've created. And let's say that these berry bushes that I planted here, as I get to them, let's say these are like your decor items that you built in base. These items are safe from being infected so long as the domestic plant herd size does not reach 36. Otherwise, it becomes a part of the targets that it could potentially choose. But there is a caveat to that, though. You have to make sure that after every rift has finished spawning their entire waves, you need to go to each of these spawners wherever they have spawned, and you need to kill the Bright Shades. Because if you don't kill the Bright Shades, what will happen is, well, these will all of these will eventually be filled up, and then your pair, uh, the plants that you did plant will be a target for the Bright Shades. A bit of a side note for worlds that existed before this update went live. Whatever the name of this update was, Taking Root, I believe. Uh, plants that you transplanted before the update don't get that domestic plant herd created. It's, I guess it was just a limitation they had. So, I guess you can count yourself lucky, I guess. What that means is that these berry bushes that I've got here, they're kind of treated like a naturally spawning berry bush. So the way the game works, if there are no transplanted plants for it to target, it will try to find some random patch in the world, the most densest patch it can find, and the most densest range being within a 5 tile radius. It will try to find the densest, the densest plants in your world and infect those. So that's kind of how it works. So if you don't want them spawning in your base, make sure you have some sort of bait station placed away so you don't have to deal with them in your base like I do. So let's get into the setup I have here. I have planted dragon fruits. The reason we chose dragon fruits is if we chose saplings or grass tufts, if they wither in the summer because of the heat, they are no longer a target for the bright shades to infect. Uh, plants, they don't weather during the summer. Uh, the reason we use dragon fruit as well is, unlike other crops, these don't burn. So, if you try burning with a torch, it, it, you just can't. So these are summer proof as well. Uh, the reason I have InocuVigil, the bright shades do spawn on the map as a map icon. So... Uh, you can easily identify where the bright shades have spawned. Uh, these lightning rods are here. I have these lightning rods as well uh, lined up as well. Uh, the rifts they will not spawn six tiles within a six tile radius of a structure. So anything in the structures tabs, you're pretty much safe. Uh, if you can also do, even though lightning rods don't block you when uh, you walk through them, they count. So anything that has a structure tag or anything that you can place down and blocks your pass, like say like this. Find some machine, I can't walk through it. That counts. So if you place a structure every six tiles, you won't have a rift that spawns and that could potentially uproot your dragon fruit. I had that happen before. Uh, you don't want that happening. You just have to redo the work. It just keeps it safe. So the distance at which the bright shades can spawn from each other is a minimum of two and a half wall units and a maximum of eight wall units. So you can get bright shades that spawns here, one that spawns here, and then one that spawns kind of close, like over here. You've seen them clump together. They've done that on purpose to be very annoying. Well, there is a way to make it so that you only get two bright shades per wave or even one. If you're having difficulties, you know, trying to kill three every wave, you can make it so it's only two or one every wave. And the way you do that is you make this kind of setup. 
where the crops are planted far apart from each other. This here is a 4x4, and with this setup, you can get like one bright shade spawning here, another bright shade will spawn here, and that's it. You only get two bright shades. For some reason, it doesn't really spawn here. Not entirely sure why. It just works that way, and uh, I'll take advantage of that. So you only get two bright shades per wave. If you wanted to be only one bright shade per wave, instead of making it a 4x4, four four, you can probably make it a 6x6 six six and just uh, plant in each tile accordingly. Just make sure that you don't have an extra seed over here. Otherwise, you can get one bright shade here and then one bright shade here. And you don't want that. If you want less bright shades per wave, right? They're kind of annoying. So let's say you don't want to make a giant spawning platform. It's too much work. It looks ugly. You just want to farm your crops in peace. Well, this method is for you. Bright shades have a special property to them where, if I can get the right camera, new bright shades and then the following wave will not spawn in a seven and a half tile radius to a currently existing bright shade. So what you do, you place down a sacrificial plant in this case, I've chosen a berry bush. I planted it. I let this bright shade first infect this berry bush. And then you can plant anything within this seven and a half tile range. And they will not be infected by additional bright shades in the following ways. You just need to make sure that first you place down your sacrificial plant. Let that get infected. And then you can build with your plants in that radius now you might be asking yourself what do i have here what's what's this setup in the center well the bright shades have a hostile target range of three tiles so one two three if i inch a little forward yeah the tail it's going to come out it wants to kill me and it will travel out of this tile range but if I never get in the range in the first place, go in. No, don't follow me. Go inside. All right, here we go. I built this fence along this uh, section here, so I don't go in within the three tile aggro range. I can just keep hugging this and the bright shades will not attack me at all. So you got a dead zone of three tiles. But you also got a lot of room to work with to plant your crops, your berry bushes, whatever it is, whatever plant it is you want to grow that could be potentially be infected. You've got a lot of room. Uh, if you want to do this for yourself, you got one, two, three tiles out from the bright shade. You've got about another three tiles to work with uh, this way. You go one, two, three from the center here. And in this corner, you got this gap here, and you got this L shape here. So hopefully this video was of help to you. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them. Again, much thanks to Electro Eli's post on the Clay forums. It really did help illuminate a lot of the hidden mechanics in this update. That really isn't obvious unless you look at the Lua, which, you know, thanks Clay. Uh, subscribe, like, share with your friends. Yeah, uh, I don't have anything else to say, so that's it. Bye.